Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. When in January the EU Commission appointed German Christian Democrat MEP Markus Pieper for a new position as a small business envoy, it sparked an outcry. The reason? Markus Pieper scored worse than other candidates for the plum position with almost 19,000 euros per month. The recruitment drew accusations of cronyism, as Pieper belongs to the same political party as Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Four fellow commissioners protested in writing, and the European Parliament, in a landslide vote, asked von der Leyen to rescind the hire. This week, on what should have been his first day of work, Pieper pulled the plug. He resigned, accusing Commissioner Thierry Breton of boycotting his appointment for party politics. Things would look differently after the European elections with foreseeable new majorities, Pieper ominously said. When Euronews' Jack Schickler wanted to comment from the Commission, the spokesman was not in the mood. I wonder if you could comment on either of those allegations he made. No, is my answer. You have a follow up? Sometimes Brussels can be hard on you. That's an experience that participants of a Europe wide far right nationalist gathering made this week. The likes of Viktor Orban and Mr. Brexit Nigel Farage were invited speakers, but the organizers struggled to find a venue in Brussels willing to host them. When they finally found one, police moved in to shut it down, acting on an order by the local mayor. But then the highest court in the Belgian capital allowed the meeting to take place the following day. Participants saw the whole incident as a political hit job. What's happened here is now on the stage of where there is global media, we can see that, 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 that legally held opinions from people who are going to win national elections is no longer acceptable here in Brussels, the home of globalism. What the Pieper affair and the arm twisting over the far right conference have in common is that parts of the population see them both as a power play by the establishment. They point at possible nepotism and infringement of free speech as evidence that our existing democratic system is, well, rotten. Researchers have recently found out that there is a growing number of citizens and democracies worldwide who are fed up with democracy especially elections, and want something else. Joining me now is Kevin Casasamora, Secretary General of the International Institute for Democracy and Electoral Assistance, based in Stockholm. Welcome to the program. It's great to be here, Stefan. Thank you so much. So your latest Perceptions of Democracy survey has found that voters around the world show widespread skepticism about whether their elections are free and fair. I wonder who is to blame for this, Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin? Uh, I would blame it on populism, polarization, and post-truth. Uh, I think that's where the, the, the root of the problem is, particularly polarization. With polarization levels going uh, through the roof, uh, a lot of people are likely to distrust the electoral system if their tribe doesn't come out on top so uh, this is a this is a big driver and then in, a in terms of a specific people i i have to think that the impact of what happened in the us in in 2020 with trump undermining the credibility of elections uh, has had global ramifications for sure interesting now distrust in elections is one thing but there's also the apparent desire for a strong and undemocratic leader what did you find out? There's a strong demand for what I would call efficacy. Uh, you know, the notion that what we need is an efficacious government, regardless of whether it's democratic or not. Uh, out of 19 countries, in eight of them, uh, we find more favorable opinions than unfavorable opinions towards that sort of, of leadership. So. I guess this is a this is a major area of of concern. How should democratic governments respond to this growing skepticism within their populations? I would say that a crucial thing is reducing polarization levels. I mean trying to find common ground 
with their political opponents to forge broad-based agreements to improve the quality of public services. Because for most people, they, uh, they shape their perception of democracy in their relationship with the local policeman, in their relationship with the local a teacher at the local school, in the relationship with the local judge. That's their experience with institutions, and that's where most of the perception of democracy comes from. Very interesting, uh, Kevin Casasamora, Secretary General of International IDEA. Thanks for sharing your insights with us. Thank you for having me. A country that is struggling to reach the full democratic standard is Georgia. Torn between a sometimes Kremlin-friendly government and a pro-European opposition. For months now, despite huge protests, the government is trying to pass a controversial foreign agents bill. When it was debated in Parliament this week, this happened. An opposition leader punched a senior member of the government on the head. <laughs> followed was total mayhem, not worthy of any democracy. The bill would require any organization accepting over 20% of its funding from outside Georgia to register as pursuing the interests of a foreign power. Should it become law, it would complicate Georgia's efforts to join the European Union. But this is probably its objective. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grober. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.